Kia ora, I'm Roy. And I'm Emma. Welcome to Spotlight on New Zealand. Tonight we focus on one of New Zealand's greatest tragedies, the sinking of Waiheni. Throughout tonight's show we will try to find out as much as possible about the disaster so we, so we as a nation can begin to understand this terrible tragedy. On the morning of the 10th of April 1968, after the overnight voyage from Littleton, the ferry Waiheni encountered the worst of a violent southerly storm with winds gusting 160 kilometres per an hour while entering the Wellington Harbour with passengers terrified and feeling very ill indeed. The captain and his crew attempted to get their ship back on course and without danger. After many hours the passengers and crew had abandoned ship and were flung out into the rough seas of the harbour in life rafts. They had to make the Polarius crossing to Wellington's rocky shores where they were met by local Wellington desperate to help those rescuers could help see the state of harbour and understood how difficult the crossing had become. Perhaps ever before those on board had realised we are lucky enough tonight to have footage recovered of the residents in C's side village of East Burren back in 1968. They were among the many heroic rescuers on that fateful day. Here's Wellington's correspondent Mama Tamateo with 1968 report. Hello, I'm Mama and I'm here with Adam, a very heroic rescuer and his wife Tiana. Thank you for joining me. You must be very ex exhausted. Yeah, it's been a long day. What were the conditions like when you arrived at the shore to see the Waiheni ship in that position? There were gale force winds and massive swells. The Waiheni ship was just off of shore and we could hardly see it. It was very frightening. I understand you tried to help. How so? Uh, I seen an old lady struggling so I swam out and gave her to a St John's ambulance officer. Did you ever expect to see that massive ship end up in the predicament that it was? No, it was totally unexpected. We've been on the Waiheni, sh Waiheni ship several times before and it was very safe. Thank you. Signing off of this, a very bleak day in New Zealand. Do, do I go? An interesting interview. Our thanks to Mama for sending us that old report. Those unfortunate enough to be on the Wahine on the 10th of April 1968 had to deal with a very rough night and day. Many passengers were throwing up continuously on those extremely rough seas. The passengers were all told that the storm would pass and to hold tight. Most thought it was a typical Wellington southerly storm and that the Wahine would ride it out. Unfortunately, at 6.41am, the Wahine was carried out into the rocks of Barrett Reef sustaining serious damage to the length of her hull. The starboard, that's right to us land lovers, and the port, that's left, engine stopped working. The anchors were dropped, but it was some time before they held firm. Rescue attempts were made impossible by the raging gales and massive swells. By early afternoon, all 734 passengers and crew were ordered to abandon ship and get into the life rafts. Only four of the eight rafts could be used because of the angle on the now sinking ship. All 734 people on the ship managed to escape, but due to the stormy seas, 51 lost their lives. We can only imagine what those giant waves look like to the people in their small life rafts, or worse, for those who had capsized. Our film technicians have found some much damaged, some much damaged footage of two survivors filmed only hours after the disaster in a civil defence shelter. We have carefully cleaned and restored the film. This is the first time it has been shown to the New Zealand public. Let's roll that footage now. How are you? Are you okay? Oh gosh, are you warm enough? Okay, okay. Are we rolling? Right. I'm Cameron Goodall and joining me now are two survivors from today's disaster, Josh Miller and Jamie Alden. What was your reaction to the, to the, when the captain called you 
to the mustering station with your life jackets. Uh, first shock, and then um, uh, we uh, by being in bed, we could tell that it was um, it was rough, but not rough enough to damage the ship. And Jamie, what was your reaction? Well, I was in bed at the time, and well, I heard some screaming coming from above, and I sort of just followed that and went up. How rough was it when you were in the lifeboats heading to shore from the ship? Well, as we were getting lowered down into the water, um, a swell came along and washed over our boat, um, like drenching us. And then on the way back, a swell tipped our boat, and to save ourselves, we climbed on another overturned lifeboat. How was it for you, Jamie? Well, I was in the boat after Josh's, and well, a couple of children fell off, but we managed to save them and got to shore all safe. Josh, how did you guys meet? Oh, uh, um, uh, well, when we got back to the civil defence shelter, we just started talking. Um, we're out of time. Get these guys a hot drink. A fascinating piece of New Zealand history. We are so lucky to have such amazing technology that allows us to still view it. And now let us look at human error being the possible reason for the sinking of the Waiheni. Captain Hector Gordon Robertson had been master of the ill-fated ferry for the some time. He had sailed her to, the, to and from Wellington numerous times in strong winds and high seas and was an experienced captain. It was Captain Robertson's decision to either the harbour when they did. They had arrived 20 minutes behind schedule when freak gusts of 100 knots or more struck the vessel and put them out of line. He was quoted at the time as saying, if those wind winds had struck five minutes later, we would have been through the engine and could have come down the harbour. We could have come down and dropped anchor in an oriental bay where it was quite calm. Some people suggest that Captain Robertson was too late in, in his decision to put the passengers into life rafts. They have suggested they should have been evacuated much earlier. Captain Robertson, however, feels he made the right decision, saying, people who say that don't know what they are talking about, if I had put them off any earlier, everyone would have been lost. I would have 600 lives on my conscience. In a moment, we will take a closer look at the weather on the fateful day, but now look, let's look at an interview given by William Schmitz in 1972. This interview may give us some insight as what was happening on the bridge that day. Captain Hector, Captain Hector Robertson, who was the captain of the ill-fated ferry that went down in the Wellington Harbour on the 10th of April 1968. So Hector, now that we are a few years on, have you ever thought you should have abandoned the ship earlier? No, I don't. Even though we lost 51 lives, I... Uh, even though we lost 51 lives, I still think I, ugh, more people could have died in those rough seas. Do you feel guilty knowing you had a big part in those passengers losing their lives? Yes, I do, very much so. I can still picture them now. It will never go away. What are you doing with your life at the moment? I'm spending more time with my family. I don't know if I'll be going back to be a captain on a ferry again. Thanks for your time, Hector. Fascinating old footage there. Let's look at the weather on the 10th of April, 1968. It certainly was a terrible day to be stuck outside in the New Zealand. In New Zealand, um, Cyclone Giselle was first reported on the 5th of April, 1968, when it hit French Caledonia with the storm warnings issued throughout New Zealand. The next day, early on the 9th of April, Cyclone Giselle hit the Cape Reinga, 
Winds of up to 160 kilometres an hour cause massive damage to buildings. Torrential rain flooded farmlands in Northland, drowning hundreds of farm animals. A farmer was also killed when he was blown off his haystack. The cyclone's patterns of damage continued as it travelled across the North Island, but turned south down the east coast. Ships were driven ashore and the land and landslip closed roads. Rain caused massive flooding and the wind left roofs torn off and windows broken. By the time Cyclone Giselle hit Wellington on the morning of the 10th of April, another storm had driven up the west coast of the South Island from Antarctica. The two storms met over the capital, causing huge damage. Winds in Wellington were the strongest ever recorded at one point reaching speeds of 275 kilometres an hour. As the storm moved on to the South Island, hundreds of Christchurch houses lost their roofs and both the Avon and the Heathcote rivers flooded. Throughout Canterbury, over 500 hectares of forests were destroyed. In Southland, the flooding was the worst since 1913. Some people were stranded on the roofs of their houses and had to be rescued by jet boat. Cyclone Giselle finally blew out somewhere in the southern ocean. And there you have it folks, perhaps if weather forecasting could have been then what it is now, the Wahine disaster would never have happened. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, what an incredible storm it must have been. Well that's all we have time for this evening. We hope you have learnt something about your country's history and about one of our darkest days. Please join us next week when we focus on the Springbok tour of 1981. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next time. From the whole team at Spotlight on New Zealand, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>